Hello everybody, happy holidays, welcome back. All right, this time we wanna finish up our series on endocrine, right? And we needed to get to ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. This one's a little bit deceptive because there, there's a fair, amount of, a fair amount of dynamic things happening here, okay? All right, so anyway, we'll get into that. And what are we doing in RN Cliff Notes? helping students to see through larger concepts. And if you hadn't picked up on it yet, wow, my voice is a little different. I went running the other day, and my wife, you know, she's all, why are you running on the coldest day of the year? It's like, hey, I felt, you know, motivated to go do it, but now I'm sick. <laughs> and of course she lets me have it, right? Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> yeah. So my voice is a little different, but it's okay. All right, so your number in your paper, from one to 10. All right, you know how we do, okay? And first two parts, all right? So what are the two names for the main hormone that regulates our emergency response? Now, I know that that hormone has a partner, but we're specifically talking about the, the main hormone, but both names of it, okay? So on your paper or on your device, you should have put, and you should have put, right? Emphasis on put. Shame on you sitting there talking about, I think it's, <laughs> I'm not All right, here's the word. So, epinephrine and adrenaline. Hopefully you wrote that down or typed that in, yes? All right. Now, we love ourselves some anatomy, don't we? And now, so identify which of the following structures produce epinephrine, okay? And you should be picking a number, and you go with, if you said number nine, the adrenals, good for you, right? All right, now, for four, name the part of the adrenals, and for five through six, what hormones are produced by that part? Okay, so now, of course we are revisiting this piece that we touched on when we were talking about medication. So go check that out in the medication playlist. By the way, I adjusted the main page. So if you scroll down a little bit, it's got the playlist kind of lined up, right? So it's easy to, you know, pop in there and check out content right under what you want to study. And in this case, it's the one on medications, right? All right. So anyway, so four, name the part. Five and six, what hormones? So notice that the arrow is pointing to the outermost layer of the adrenal, right? And we want to know, what were those two hormones that we talked about? Now, it's very important that we, we, we hit this highlight for you. So while we're talking about the hormones, you need to be aware that in the laboratory, we synthesize these hormones and turn them into medications. Insulin is a great example of that. Your body makes insulin, but we can synthesize insulin or we can pull it from other resources and things like that, right? So uh, even though you produce insulin, what? All right, let's get this term in. Endogenously, right? So what, endo, inside, genus, what formation of so endogenously you make insulin but we got some folks unfortunately who can't make enough insulin or who because their uh, their pancreas was under attack by a pathogen or something like that when they were young uh, maybe their their pancreas isn't functional right so they need what an exogenous exo coming outside of the body exogenous source of insulin yeah okay so anyway as we're studying these hormones just know that when we yeah we make a, we make medications but your body makes a lot of this naturally okay all right so you should have this type of setup so you're going to name what that is and the two hormones that go with it right good next for seven and eight, right? Now, the arrow is pointing to the innermost part of the adrenal, 
right? And then we want to talk about the hormones, or I guess we can get away with calling them hormones there, uh, produced by that part. Okay, and uh, you should have this type of setup on your paper. So name it and what two things. And these should be your answers, right? So we know that the outermost part of the adrenals, that's the adrenal cortex. Easy, easy, easy. Cortex, what? Covering. C and C. Adrenal cortex. Boom, right? Can't miss that. All right? Another thing you can't miss, adrenal medulla. Now, if you've watched some of our previous videos, we've talked about how we understand that the medulla literally is what? The middle. Okay? So the middle of the adrenal is what? M, medulla, right? Versus the covering, cortex. I mean, hey, that stuff is straight up, isn't it? Study smart strategies. That's what we're after. Now, when it comes to the cortex, what I want you to catch is... This word here, cord, right? Cortisol, which is produced in the what? Cortex. So that's how the first part of that came about. And then we've got aldosterone. So wait a minute, if we put those pieces together, what do we have? Corticosteroid. So your body's endogenous source of corticosteroids, that's important, right? Your body's endogenous source of corticosteroid comes from the adrenal cortex. Now, if you need exogenous sources, this is when your doctor or your nurse practitioner or somebody's going to prescribe some prednisone or something like that for you to take, right? Because you needed an additional source, an exogenous source. You didn't have enough endogenously produced. Okay? Now, then that brings us to the adrenal medulla. And now we're looking at these neurotransmitter guys, right? So we've got epi, our good buddy, and norepinephrine. Yeah, but we can also flip their names, right? And call epi what? Adrenaline. And in the case of norepinephrine, noradrenaline. Yes, awesome. All right, moving on. So now that we are aware of that, that was level one. So we're going to take you... Take you higher in this video. Level two now is to take that understanding and push it to more of a nursing endocrine understanding, right? All right, so now what we want to know, if you've got excessive secretion of ACTH, what condition would the doctor or nurse practitioner potentially diagnose your patient with? And 10B, what condition, if they have under secretion of ACTH, might your patient be diagnosed with? Okay, several important concepts to build on from this. Okay, and what I want to show you is this little trick, right? Because that's what you came to Cliff Notes for. What? Study smart strategies? Here we go. So what I want you to do is build off of these letters. Right? So you're going to take the letter A and we're going to have you push that letter down. Right? And the letter C, we're going to have you push that letter up. And then that helps you identify what conditions we're talking about. Right? So what happens? You push that letter A down, right? Under secretion of ACTH, what does your patient wind up with potentially as a condition? Addison's disease. Right? And if you push that C up into there, your patient can wind up with Cushing's, right? And Cushing's, typically we say Cushing's syndrome. By the way, just in case we hadn't touched on it, and not to offend anybody as we use different references, uh, syndrome, typically. Typically, a syndrome reads like a checklist, right? Like a punch list. If you see this, if you see this, if you see this, then what? We've identified this syndrome because there's one, two, three, right? Or better things that we came up with that helped us identify that syndrome. 
this is the type of thing that we might observe when a person has AIDS, right? That's a syndrome. So what might we see? We might see that, that they have candida albicans, right? Candida, the yeast, but albican, albican what? Albino, so a whitish kind of cheesy coating, uh, particularly in their buccal cavity, the back of their throat and things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, we might see lesions on their skin, right? We might see that they have a recurrent pneumonia that it seems that they can't get over. These kinds of things, right? So one, two, three, what? Some type of syndrome. Likewise, Cushing's, we're going to get into those symptoms that you should see. All right? So, good there. Now, uh, yeah, Cushing's syndrome. Now, let's keep it simple, right? Cushing's, what about a Cushing's? Cushing is what you hear in that. The person's body becomes large and cushiony. Yes? So, we see the weight gain there, the moon face. Right? Well, wait, wait, wait. When we talk about moon face, we're typically used to hearing that with what medications? Steroids. Corticosteroids like prednisone cause a moon face. And what's happening? Because you're getting that exogenous source, right? That higher dose of that corticosteroid. So what happens? Weight gain, moon face, yeah, these are the things we expect to see out of that medication. Why? Because it's elevating the levels of this type of hormone response, right? So, yes, Cushing's elevated or increased secretion of ACTH, weight gain, moon face, buffalo hump, literally a hump on the back of their, their neck, the upper portion of their back there. Pink and purple stretch marks are striated, right? Thinning, fragile skin that bruises really easily. And on top of that, increased pigmentation of the skin. Muscle weakness, bone loss leading to fractures over time. So that bones fracture really easily. Uh, we'll come back to that. And then new or worsening blood pressure and headache. Okay. Now, what I want you to bear in mind is that as we speak to some of this and say that we're talking about steroids, right? And in previous videos, we mentioned steroids and we talked about what's important. What's the three S's, if you remember, when it comes to steroids? What? Sugar, salt, and sex, right? So sugar, what happens? They wind up in a hyperglycemic state because they're taking, uh, you know, steroids. And salt, well, they're in a hypernatremic state, right? Elevated salt level in their blood. Well, wait a minute. Let's look at these symptoms. Elevated salt level, what's going to happen? More water retention. And what did, we re what did we just read? High blood pressure. And as a consequence of that higher blood pressure, what fits that? Headache. Absolutely. Higher blood pressure and headache. Yes. Okay. Other things happening. Because of the saturation of salt and sugar in the blood, you can get displacement of electrolytes that are necessary for body function. And if you start displacing electrolytes, right, then you're going to start seeing things like muscle weakness. What electrolytes being displaced? Potentially potassium, but calcium. Okay. Wait a minute. If calcium's potentially being displaced, what else did we mention? Bone loss, right? Yeah, yeah, okay? So there's a lot, like I said earlier on, there's a lot of dynamic things happening with this ACTH. And that makes it, that makes it one of the go-to spots when it comes to a time for uh, examinations, yeah? All right, so our Cushing syndrome. Now, as we go on, we pause for a minute. And salute, because we're about to talk about one of my favorite presidents, right? The, the one that I think is the all-time best president that the United States has ever, right, ever experienced, right? Hands down. There he is, my guy, JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Absolutely. 
That's my dude. He's got some fantastic quotes. He's got some quotes that are relative to nursing. And we're going to get into that in later videos in our, in our series, okay? But anyway, unfortunately, uh, JFK suffered from Addison's disease. And some of the things he experienced, muscle and joint pains, extreme fatigue, low blood pressure. Now, don't forget, I want you to observe the body types. Just a minute ago, right, let's look at his appearance, which is very gaunt. Okay? Then, before, we had this person here, right? A much larger body. Why? Higher levels of the ACTH steroid type of effect, right? In this case, what? Lower level. Okay. So now, what? Low blood pressure instead of high blood pressure like the last scenario. And instead of uh, high, high levels of salt in the blood, this person's what? Having salt cravings. Check that out. Okay? And before, there was what? Issues with hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. This time, what? Low blood sugar, hypoglycemia. Previous discussion, we said weight gain. This time, what? Weight loss, decreased appetite, darkening of the skin, also known as hyperpigmentation, and nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. And that plays a key role when it comes to the salt level. Right, your body will attempt to. Your body is wise. You, you, it, that is so important to understand. If if your salt level is low, your body, although it sounds strange, your body may attempt to get rid of liquids just to try to come back to homeostasis and meet up with that low salt level. So if your body's trying to get rid of liquids, right, water trying to come down to your low level of sodium, what are we seeing? Nausea, diarrhea, what? Vomiting. Trying to get to that homeostatic level. Yeah. Okay. And relating to that as well is abdominal pain from the nausea and vomiting things and diarrhea. Absolutely. Right? So Addison's disease. Of important note, as you're providing care to your patients, it is critical that you make sure your patients are receiving steady doses of their steroid. You do not want to abruptly stop their steroid. And because that's so critical, that's typically always on your exams when we get to this topic, right? So you have to figure out a way, connect with the docs, the nurse practitioners, and make sure that your patient's getting that dose. All right, now, let's run you through the scenario because we, we, we want this to be reality-based. There's nothing worse than getting your license and getting out there, right, and somebody falls out, right, and you run up and, uh, 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 select all that apply, <laughs> right, because that's all we taught you in nursing school is how to answer questions. What a mess, right? We need reality on top of the question. So reality-wise, so your patient is MPO, and let's say it's the AM, the patient scheduled for surgery, going to be one of the first cases in the morning, and you're trying to abide by the MPO order, but as a part of the MPO, your patient's PO, steroid medications have been stopped. They've been held. You're not supposed to give them. Oh, man. Then you kind of stop. Well, the doctor that wrote the order is in the OR and not taking any more calls, right? So you try to call around, get in touch with his nurse practitioner or somebody, try to, you know, get them to okay the, the order to give the PO medication with sips of water, right? Or something like that. But you can't get a hold of anybody. Then, woe unto you. If you go and make an executive decision, I'm just going to hold it, and at least I stuck with the MPO order. No, that's not the answer, right? Get an order. Somebody else on that team, if you have to, or somebody else within that service, the doctor may be in the OR, but you get a hold of somebody, and you can still abide by the MPO order, 
because we could do an IV piggyback dose of some other steroidal medication that prevents our client from what? Being forced into Addisonian crisis. That's right. Your patient might not have Addison's, but you can force your patient into Addisonian crisis by holding their steroid dose. We don't want to abruptly stop it. If we do, we can push them into Addisonian crisis. Yes, that is a huge mistake. Get a hold of the team, right? Connect the dots, and we got to get that dose somehow. So, IV piggyback, are we going to do it with sips? Something. But you do want that clarified in the order. Don't do that on your own, okay? All right. Now, uh, I just wanted to do a comparison and give you a little bit of history too, right? So, this was the president's initial appearance. And later, he looked like that, okay? And let's just, let's just put this into perspective. We're talking about back in the day, right? Back in the day, this was not the look, right? It is today, isn't that something? <laughs> right? But back in the day, it, you, you, you wanted to look, you wanted to look fuller, you wanted to look healthy, you wanted to look, you know, uh, stout. Why? That, that fuller appearance was the appearance of wealth back in those days, right? This was not the appearance of wealth. That was. So, there were some times that being that their, fa their family came from money, his dark, his, uh, he would see a doctor secretly who would give him uh, medications, injections and things like that, especially after he had his back surgery. He especially needed the medications then. But those helped him to gain weight, right? And especially wanted to gain weight when it was time to run for the presidency. You don't want to look like some type of, right, some type of individual who doesn't have their life together, but you're running for president, right? So anyway, his father helped him with that uh, by way of the doctor secretly, and this is what the outcome was, that he put on weight. Yeah? All right, folks. Hey, thank you for liking and subscribing. We appreciate you guys. Stay tuned, okay?